One of the things that's surprising about infection risk on intestinal parasites in dogs and cats is how common some of the parasites are. And so what can we do to make common rare? We have to first understand really what is common. And if we look at surveys of intestinal parasites in dogs, most of them are done by fecal flotation. Eggs that float will be represented. So we'll see the hookworms. If the fecal float's done right, we'll see the whipworms. We'll see the roundworms. What we won't see are tapeworm eggs because tapeworm eggs don't float on fecal flotation. So we're not gonna be able to identify them that way. So we've done some surveys in the central US in the last few years, looking at complete intestinal examination. So not just fecal float, but examining the entire intestinal tract. And the most common intestinal parasites in dogs and cats are tapeworms. And so that, for me, really underscores the fact that we're missing tapeworms in practice, right? The pets are coming in with tapeworms and they're going back home again, untreated with those same tapeworms, because we don't have a way to know that they're there. There's a tapeworm um, that's been mostly reported in Canada in recent years, Echinococcus, and it creates a very severe zoonotic risk for, for people, right? So um, it infects mostly wild canids, so it's coyotes and foxes, but as there's been this um, increase in peri-domestic wildlife, and we've seen more coyotes, foxes, raccoons around where people are and where dogs are spending their time, we get spillover infections into the domestic dog population. So there's been a handful of echinococcus cases in dogs in Canada, and there was just a report of an echinococcus case in a dog in Virginia here in the United States. That's of grave concern because of the severe human disease that's caused when that then spills over from the dog population to the human population. So I think we just have to give the tapeworms the benefit of the doubt. They're gonna find a way to get into the dogs and cats and we need to be treating them for those tapeworm infections. There's so many intestinal parasites, ascarids, hookworms, whipworms are a major concern, um, tapeworms are a concern, that if we're only protecting against heartworm, we're missing a great opportunity to really help pets live longer, healthier, happier lives and, and to support that relationship with the owner. So recognizing that, that breadth of threat that exists and then choosing products that are going to address that, that are safe and effective and will provide that consistent monthly control for hookworms and whipworms, the two most common intestinal nematodes in adult dogs, and then also ascarids because those can occur in adult dogs as well as puppies, and then tapeworms. Is your dog protected? Let's find out. So do you like dogs? Absolutely, love dogs. You like worms? Oh, gross. Ew. No. <laughs> How many worms is he protected against? Um. I don't know. You don't know what you don't know, you know? Interceptor Plus protects against five types of worms. HeartGuard Plus, only three. Test dogs for heartworm infection prior to use. Reported side effects include vomiting, diarrhea, and lethargy. Ask your veterinarian about Interceptor Plus, the tasty monthly chew that steps up your worm game.